Welcome to rebuilding a large Clarkson single cylinder vertical steam engine. This is part 20 and it's all about interpreting the drawings. On screen at the moment you're looking at two slide valves. I made the top one and the bottom one was the one that was fitted originally to the engine and is nothing like the drawing. At least the one that I made matches the drawing. Most of the viewers who watch my stuff on YouTube seem to be quite normal level headed people but there are some of them out there that are a bit strange. Yes, stranger than me. I can see them now watching my videos with their fingers quivering above the keyboard ready to write something to me. For instance, one viewer put, I don't like your valve because it does not have square edges like it is on the drawing. So I'm afraid this viewer is going to get very worked up when he sees how I make the next piece. This is a drop arm for the reversing gear and this is the old drop arm that was fitted to the engine. Now it's not going to look like that, but it won't quite look like this. This is a bit too perfect. I will make a slight modification to make it a simpler part to machine. Obviously it is vital to follow the drawing to the letter for certain dimensions, that is assuming that the drawing is correct and they're not always correct. A few weeks ago I went up to see my friends at Blackgates Engineering and had a look at their display model for the Clarkson engine because they sell the castings for them. And as you can see the drop arm fitted to this engine is considerably better than the mess that was fitted to the engine that I'm working on. But even if you compare this drop arm with the original drawing, it doesn't resemble it very much. Over now to the main bearing top caps. These of course unfortunately need painting, so here we go. That's quite enough of the soothing music, what we really need is a paintbrush. And this is a paintbrush that I'm going to use to paint the bearing top caps. So now I need some paint, there's a tin of paint. And off we go, painting time. And I can hear people saying, well that's pretty stupid, leaving the nice brass oilers on and getting paint on the oilers. But it's not stupid really, because it stops the paint getting on my fingers, and if I do get some on the oilers, I can just unscrew them, clean the paint off and put them back on again. In case some viewers are finding this all a bit too much, a little too exciting, I'd like to just mention something about using these type of oilers. These are drip feed oilers, and they have a needle valve that regulates the flow of oil and the ideal is that periodically whoops I just momentarily slipped into a coma there and dropped the oiler anyway back to the story the drip of oil then lubricates the bearing but the problem is after running the steam engine if you forget to shut the needle valve the next morning when you come into the workshop there are two nice neat pools of oil around the bottom of the engine so what I usually do is fill each of these oilers three quarters full with steam oil and shut the needle valve permanently, so the lubricators will always remain three quarters full of oil, and this looks good. As most of these engines that you see me rebuild are for collectors who only run them for short periods of time, they're not like in a boat or driving machinery where they would need a constant flow of oil. It's perfectly acceptable to do it this way and it's far less messy and you don't get oil everywhere all over the engine. Plus of course it gives you something to do whilst you're watching the wheel go round. As you can see now I've nearly painted one of the bearing top caps and I'm getting a little concerned about the excitement level so what I'm going to do now is speed up the video so that you don't have to sit here watching it in real time. Not all is wasted though because I always try and give some good hints and tips when I'm painting. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.